Most of us understand that if the narcissist leaves us or we leave the narcissist, logically we get it. it's a good thing. But what do you do when you can't stop thinking about the narcissist? What do you do when you find yourself texting and stressing and they don't respond to you? How do you deal with this? Well, that's what we're talking about today at queenbeing.com. This is another viewer question that I'm answering in a video. So let's get started. My name is Angie Atkinson and on this channel I offer free daily video coaching to help you discover, understand and overcome narcissistic abuse and toxic relationships. I like to call it toxic relationship rehab. Does that sound good to you? If so, hit that subscribe button and we'll get going. So we're going to start off with a question from this viewer. Here you go. Amber says, my narcissistic boyfriend is ignoring me and I can't stop texting and thinking about him at all. It sucks. Can you please help? Well, let me see what I can do, Amber. One of the first things I would tell you is that I'm so sorry that you're going through this. I know exactly how that feels to feel kind of obsessed with someone. But here's the thing. If this person has walked away from you, maybe you could look at it differently. Maybe you could see it as a blessing in disguise, as no longer having to deal with the abuse of the everyday relationship. Maybe instead of letting them make the decision to change your life, you can make the decision to change your life. Maybe you can decide that starting right now, you're no longer going to tolerate being treated like that by the narcissist or anyone else. A couple of quick tips. First of all, remember that you have control over your thoughts, believe it or not. So the next time you decide you're going to text the narcissist, I want you to make yourself wait 20 minutes. And during that time, I want you to focus on something that you want not the narcissist, something else. So maybe focus on being happy or finding a love that actually deserves to have you in their life, for example. There are lots of different ways you can go with this. Bottom line though, you've got to stay focused on what you want and not what you don't want. And I know for sure that what you don't want is abuse. You deserve to have someone who treats you with love and respect. But guess what, my friend? Until you love and respect yourself enough to not treat yourself like you don't deserve better, you're gonna have trouble. So we're gonna wanna start with self-respect. I know that doesn't help you in the moment, so let's get back to that. Something you should know about narcissists is that even if they're not diagnosed with NPD, they often have this ability to really ramp up romance and make it feel like something amazing. They kind of make you feel like you're the star of your own personal movie, don't they? But they have this habit of kind of cutting you off the knees for very little reason if any reason at all. Maybe they're just bored and moving on, or maybe someone distracted them. Oh, squirrel, you know? The thing is, that is not good for your relationship or any relationship. Narcissists are not capable of being good at relationships, not really. They don't give you much of a chance. Very often, they mess with your head. So what it ends up happening is you don't get closure from a narcissist. And when the relationship ends, it kind of feels like you're still in the middle of it. So you're left just where you are right now, kind of spinning, going, what am I supposed to do now? So redirect your thoughts. Have you ever heard about the elephant in the corner and how you can't stop thinking about the elephant in the corner because it's right there in front of you, like this, right? The elephant in the corner analogy. When you attempt to force yourself not to think about the elephant in the corner, what are you thinking about? It's the elephant in the corner, right? Instead of focusing on the fact that you, you feel just obsessed and you can't stop thinking about them and you can't stop texting them, try flowing with your thoughts. Don't try to stop them. Just let them flow and then imagine yourself letting go of that person. Another thing I like to do is I like to go, well, I'm not, I don't want to think about X, Y, or Z, right? So let's say I start thinking about X, Y, and Z. And then I go, no, I now cancel that thought and I replace it with this affirmation of my true divine desire. So I, I decide to myself, that I'm not going to allow myself to continue to think about that thing. And instead, I'm going to focus on what I do want, which is usually unrelated to that thing. Another tip, you can put a rubber band on your wrist. And every time you think about them, snap, snap, snap. And I know it sounds silly, but a lot of people find that to be highly effective. Don't forget, it's okay if you need to take some time to mourn this person. You can cry if you need to cry. You can scream and break and throw things if you need to. Give yourself a little bit of time to do that if necessary. Don't just pretend it didn't happen. Let the emotions out. When you are in a relationship with a narcissist, very often your emotions are cut right off. You're not allowed to experience them or feel them. So try letting them out and then moving forward. That can be incredibly helpful for you. Another thing you can do is simply go around where you live, go around your stuff, your office, your home, and take all pictures and memories of this person out. It can help you to move forward emotionally and mentally. Your visual cues of that person, any smells of that person, anything like that. Removing those can help you to sort of let go a little faster. One thing you have to know is that you're kind of addicted to the narcissist. Let's talk about that. Logically, you know you shouldn't do things that are bad for you, like drugs, for example. And toxic people who are bad for our lives, well, we all know that we need to get or stay away. But 
obviously it's just not so easy. See, what people don't always realize is that we are sort of addicted to the abuse we've suffered from our narcissists, believe it or not. And when we don't do anything to manage those addictions, we might find ourselves falling back into our old habits, right? Well, it's just like when you've been a lifelong smoker and one day you'd go, you know what, I quit, cold turkey. You know the cigarettes were killing you, but they tasted so good and they made you feel so relaxed. And because you're currently trying to quit, you feel like just one won't hurt you. Maybe it'll relax you, maybe it'll take the edge off, and maybe you think you can handle it, but before you know it, you're back to your old three-pack-a-week habit, and your brief freedom from them is but a memory. It's the same deal with a narcissist. Here's something you should know. Romantic love actually stimulates the same area of the brain as addiction. So your addiction to your narcissist really isn't your fault. Your body sort of goes into survival mode. Your primitive mind tells you that you need the narcissist, but why is this? Well, according to scientists, we're biologically programmed to behave that way. There's an evolutionary spin here. The loss of the potential baby-making mate would be bad for us as a species. On top of that, humans are hardwired to develop bonds to other humans. That's another survival urge. Add together your biological need to bond and the need to keep your mate or to feel great distress in the loss of your mate. And what do you have? Well, it affects you like a drug. Your relationship with this toxic person. And when you're not getting that sweet, sweet poison, you might just miss it. A lot like a crack addict might miss his fix. And just as your body wants to protect you from losing your narcissistic love, your brain wants to lie to you about it and offers up only selective memories in times of great stress. So let go of the what ifs if you ever want to heal after narcissistic abuse. Anyone who's found him or herself alone in the world has reflected back on an old love and wondered, hmm, what if? Whether we admit it or not, right? But when the what if is geared at a toxic and painful past relationship, sometimes your memory can be a bit selective, especially when you're feeling weak and vulnerable in your life. For example, if you recently left your narcissist, you got a job, you saved up enough money for a down payment on a little place of your own, it would seem like everything would be working out the way you want. It should be good, right? On the other side of that coin, though, there is the natural trepidation that anyone who faces big life changes is going to feel. You know, the kind of feeling of being on the precipice of personal evolutionary shifts, well, it can leave you feeling pretty vulnerable, can't it? You're scared, you're in desperate need of some familiar feeling comfort. And it is in those moments of weakness that we pick up the phone and we make the call, or we text the message that we're desperate, that we need them, that we miss the good old days. It is in those moments in which we, we forget all about the gaslighting, we forget the name calling, the painfully awkward silences that almost hurt your ears more than the screaming and more than the excruciatingly personal insults. These are the times when we need to remember why we left. Educating ourselves on narcissistic abusers can help to increase our resistance to their tactics and behaviors. When we are armed with knowledge and understanding of these patterns and the typical behaviors and motivations of narcissists, well, we can better resist and protect ourselves from them and from falling for their tricks. Now, it's normal for you to sort of be invested emotionally into a person that you have been in a relationship of any sort with, especially a dating or love relationship, anyone you're in the family with, anything like that. It doesn't even have to be a good relationship. You're still gonna be emotionally invested. It's human nature. Think about Stockholm Syndrome, during which the hostage develops a certain sort of affinity for the captor. They feel good about them. And so the feeling of longing becomes sort of universal. Do you see what I'm saying? But if you try to think rationally about the situation and you try to evaluate it without emotion, which I know is hard right now, you're gonna see that this wasn't really a very healthy bond to begin with. And the fact that this is a narcissist would indicate that you've got certain things you need to work through after this type of abusive situation. You probably, if you're being honest with yourself, thought about letting go of this narcissist more than once, right? Regardless of your reason for missing the narcissist, I think the very best thing you can do right now is stop allowing this person to just randomly choose your life for you. You decide now that it's your life. This kind of offers you a good opportunity because now you have a reason to let go of this person. Now, you are no longer required to stick around and deal with the crap that you, this narcissist has been putting you through all of this time. Now, you get to decide where it goes from here. And if I'm you, I'm taking this opportunity to start my life again without that person. What do you think about that? This brings me to the question of the day. And the question of the day is, have you been here? Have you done this? What advice would you offer to my viewer? Share your thoughts and your experiences about all of this in the comments below. 
Maybe you'll help another survivor get through the day. Thank you so much for being a part of my day and a part of my life. And hey, thanks for letting me be a part of yours. It really does mean a lot to me. I'll see you soon. It's my mission to teach others what I know to be true. You really can create the life you want. Take care of your body. Take care of your soul. Nurture the real you and introduce him or her to the world. Be comfortable in your own skin and in your place in this world. Take your spot. Take it now. And the universe will take its cue from you. You feel me? If so, subscribe to my channel. Let's get it done together.